Today we will hear from several extraordinary individuals who have endured the worst forms of human exploitation and survived human trafficking. I welcome each and every one of you and thank you most sincerely for your courage, commitment and generosity in sharing your stories of pain, suffering and redemption. My story happened in Ljubljana, Slovenia, where I moved in September 2004. I moved there to continue my university studies. I was alone and distant from all my friends that I had, from the world that I knew. And then I quickly found myself surrounded by strangers. One of my new friends, a girl, she said her name was Romana, offered me to stay in her apartment since at that moment I did not know where I'm going to live. She was very kind to me and supportive, so I entirely trusted her. I was looking for a part-time job to support myself during the school year. One day, in October 2004, she came home and told me that she had organized an interview for me at an accounting firm. After that, I never saw Romana again. The next morning, I went to an office where I sat down for an interview with a woman. The interview had lasted about 10 minutes when two men entered the room and dragged me away to a car. I was screaming and resisting. I was taken somewhere blindfolded, then raped many times and beaten because I was resisting. I was drugged with heroin. All my things were taken and I was forced to wear sexually provocative clothes. I was forced to do prostitution in Ljubljana for about four months. I was repeatedly threatened in order to obey them, especially by the life and freedom of my little sister. And I was constantly reminded how easy it is for them to put her in my place. We girls suffered more. We were distributed to rebel commanders as objects without rights and were sexually abused. We had to carry very heavy loads, cook and do other duties, including digging in the gardens, in the rebel camps. I was given to a man who had 20 other abducted girls, and he was a brutal man, and I had two children with him. Victims should be at the center of our response to trafficking. In my reports and in all activities I've carried out within the framework of my mandate, I have emphasized that the basis of our work should be the adoption of a victim-centered and human rights-centered approach to combat trafficking. I was in captivity for seven years and 10 months, and I escaped in the year 2004, when the rebels had come back to northern Uganda. I could take months talking about what I went through and what I saw. But I must be brief, so I will tell you what I think must be done to help others like me. The affected people should be given support to recover psychologically. They should be given counseling, accepting them back to the community. They should have physical support, health provision of basics like shelter and others. They should be given educational support there should be protection, where each member state should protect its citizens and especially the vulnerable women and children during wars and conflicts. They need to train the police and, office and officers and prosecutors so that we, they can identify and protect victims. We need to provide victims with service like the one that I received from Santuario for Family. Today, we live in times where slavery is still all around us. As we move forward or strive to move forward in providing more freedom and equality and basic human rights for all, we have on the other side this horrible fact. 
Do we really need millions more victims in order to experience a true wake-up call? I really wonder how many more 13-year-old girls, your daughter, my sister, our children need to be forced into prostitution.